Hi everyone, it's Jay here uh, with another edition of just talking about um, hiring and data science hiring. And this subject is pretty interesting because I think uh, I personally have always been in the hiring space just for some reason initially when I uh, graduated college and as a senior actually I was really interested in finding a job and finding different kinds of data science inter internships so essentially it always happened so that uh, I was building these like systems basically uh, Python scripts to basically scrape Indeed and figure out if there's a way that I could basically just find all the entry-level jobs out there uh, and this is when I was a senior you know not a lot of job pre prospects uh, and so this kind of got me thinking more about like what actually made someone qualified for a job right and what makes anyone actually qualified and I think this became ever more prevalent uh, when I joined uh, Jobber, which was a job searching startup. Uh, and so I kind of want to break it down to the fact that uh, Jobber was, um, let me like give some more context. Jobber was a startup that essentially uh, was like a Tinder for jobs. So you would swipe left to pass on a job and then you swipe right to apply to the job, right? And so. Essentially what we found was that uh, I was hired on as like the first data scientist, essentially tasked with figuring out if we could improve the recommendation engine, right? So what would happen is you sign up, uh, you enter in, your, enter in your email, you enter in your resume, uh, and then uh, immediately you would get a bunch of jobs that would just pop up on your feed. And so uh, basically like our revenue at this company, right? This is a 10 person startup. I was like the fourth engineer. And so our revenue margins were actually pretty good and we were actually profitable uh, in like a couple of the weeks because of the fact that um, we made money off of every single job application. And so every single time that you actually sent someone a application, it would basically give us make us money. And we were sending these applications to these job board aggregators. So places like Career Builder, ZipRecruiter, you know, companies that essentially uh, made money by taking like a job that was hard to hire and then spraying it across the entire internet. And so this was initially the first uh, data science job that I had where I was actually tasked with building something that was actually pretty complicated and directly related to how much revenue we were going to make, right? And what we found was that building a recommendation engine is extremely hard, uh, especially for the job search because everyone's job search is a little bit different, right? Like you could be really interested in, um, if you're like, let's say in the service industry, you don't really care about any kind of job that you get, right? But if you're someone very specific, like for data science, you're very specific, you have very specific needs. So you are basically only looking for data related jobs, right? And that narrows down your subset because uh, you know this kind of job would pay more because it's very specialized. Whereas if you're in the service industry and you're working for Uber, you could work as a server, uh, you could work as a barista, you know, that's a very different kind of matching algorithm. And so if you think about how you design a recommendation engine at that point, it's like, okay, if I put on my resume, I'm a barista, and we just do it by straight up text matching, right? So data science matches a data scientist, great. That works great. But if you're a barista and there's no barista jobs available, uh, what are we going to match you to? So effectively, we'd want to know that we're going to match you to essentially other um, barista type jobs, right? In this, in the service industry, so like a waiter or like a uh, bartender, right? And so the problem is the algorithms, uh, depending on what kind of job it is, what kind of person it is, um, applicant on the other side, it really makes it difficult to make this kind of uh, recommendation algorithm and what made it harder was that we actually had all these uh, people that would swipe like a ton on every single job they treated it like it was like a tinder app literally like you know the guys that would go through and just swipe on every single girl or woman out there it is the same thing for um, jobs like you'd have candidates you know no resume bear like basically like their name their location like maybe they did one thing in the past like an internship and then they basically swipe right on like every single job that, because all they needed was just something that they could uh, get a job with. You know, a lot of people were 
you know, had zero experience, but all they needed was a first job to get through the door or just something to just pay the bills so that they could get through like the next week. Um, and so this really like created a complication when you're trying to match uh, from basically the very lowest level of a uh, entry level job all the way to like super experienced, you know, like headhunters for like corporate level executives. Um, and so this probably was, you know, this is like the start of how broken like the entire hiring process has always been, right? I mean, you have these like specialized recruiting startups such as like Hired, uh, Triple Byte, uh, that are all targeting like very professional level jobs because they can make money off of that, you know, first year salary uh, and like a uh, percentage of the first year salary, right? So if I'm hired and I play someone, that's like 20% of $150,000 that is suddenly in my revenue bank. And so if you are a regular recruiter, you know, that sounds pretty good because if you're not actually working for an agency, then you could place five people and make, you know, $150,000. Um, this is not actually how it works out in the long run. Um, and that's why recruiting is generally like been such a hard and difficult uh, just industry to enter in, right? And so if you see that quality in general like if we go back to the idea of just like what makes a quality applicant for a job like you can understand that like essentially it there is no real uh metric that you can actually use because uh in one part of the funnel in terms of job placements you think that recruiters determine what's quality right because it's like how many out of all the resumes that they screen, like how many did they actually like and eventually talk to the person? And then how many did they actually just do thumbs down and say like, I'm not gonna actually talk or like this is a terrible fit, right? But in the end, like a recruiter is just a proxy for what they think is a good person that will be able to pass the interview and actually get the job, right? Because recruiters have different incentives. Like it doesn't even matter how well they perform like on like once they actually get on the job, like they all they have to do is pass 90 days and then recruiters get their fee or like the internal recruiter gets to basically take one off their quota list. Um, so if you think about like a recruiter that has to recruit like five data scientists a year, they, they are basically trying to figure out like what kind of candidate will be perfect for this company uh, and what will actually get them through the interview. And so a lot of the times you see these recruiters that are actually helping out uh, with the candidates, it's because, it's because their their incentives are directly aligned in that regard. So uh, you think that the recruiter would actually have a good understanding of what is actually a good candidate or like what is a quality candidate. But at the same time, it doesn't really turn out that way. Um, and I would say that's because of the fact that uh, there's so much more bias that can be introduced throughout the process that uh, still happens you know that still gets uh put into this kind of array of what basically happens when you're trying to look for a job so let's say that you you know have a great resume and then you interview at somewhere like uh, facebook or google but then they ask you a question that you have no idea how to solve for the technical screen or maybe last night you know you just didn't get that much sleep you know you're distracted there's a pandemic going on obviously you're worried um, you would probably not do that well and suddenly Facebook would suddenly think that okay this was a bad candidate and then now you're like a zero in their algorithm for like who's a good candidate and who's a bad candidate right and you know that's not actually true this is a an effect of like a biased opinion maybe you would have been like the next CEO if you just gone past the interview and stayed for 30 years um, it's kind of like the problem with I think most of recruiting is that uh, we create all these signals that try to uh, use as like basically uh, ways for us to tell if a candidate is good or not. And then we can't actively figure that out when we go through the recruiting process because we're introducing bias uh, everywhere into the uh, system, right? And so you see that the best companies like Facebook and Google, they have all these like ways to try to basically reduce their bias uh, in their interview process by having their interviewers uh, basically function as robots and go through checklists. Uh, but that's because they've found and created their own basically feedback funnel for what they think is actually a good uh, like candidate for their existing system. 
So um, if you are applying to a large company, then it's really helpful for you to figure out if uh, you like you know, the company and what you're maybe going to work on if you go through the interview process and just feel like you fit in through that interview process. You know, um, I personally don't think uh, I could really um, work with some different companies like if because they put me through an interview process if they're asking me brain teasers then you know then I think then that's not a good fit for me uh, but you know if you're also just don't care about what kind of job you have you just want to get paid the most amount of money then that obviously makes sense uh, and so I think the last bit that I wanted to talk about was how even in the performance screen you know it doesn't actually guarantee anything in terms of uh, understanding if a candidate is good or not, right? So let's say that you are Facebook, right? And you've created this full pipeline of basically like understanding like who's uh, good in the interview, who's good in the recruiter screen. Now you just have to measure like in the very end, like who's actually good on the job, right? To create your full funnel of just analysis for understanding who's a good candidate and who's a bad candidate. Um, and Let's say that your manager just doesn't like you, you know, uh, he or she just, you know, the first day on the job, you didn't shake their hand and then they just forevermore just had a bad opinion of you. Maybe you guys have two conflicting political views. Um, maybe you guys just somehow just have two conflicting personality types. Uh, how do you think that's actually going to affect, you know, your end performance review? Like if they're completely objective and logical, then it shouldn't affect it at all because basically what they're supposed to measure is like how well you benefited the company and how well you did your work. Um, but at the same time, if they don't, if they're not like that, if they're like regular human beings that are easily susceptible to just general um, emotions and subconscious ideals about how we view other humans, then they're gonna give you maybe a little bit poorer of a review. Uh, and this goes for even further up, right? Like, does it even matter like how well you perform if maybe all you actually really need to do is like maintain your company's team or like not get your budget a slash in half? And which then it means you just have to buddy up with the next director, you know, who's even higher up in the political chain of corporate politics. Uh, and so the incentives, you know, are not entirely aligned uh, all the time when in terms of like companies when they're actually, how much performance matters in terms of like sustaining the business and how much does performance matter when maybe you're in a culture in which it's better to be well liked than actually uh, perform completely well, right? And, you know, I can speak for that because I don't want a coworker that I don't enjoy working with, right? Uh, and I think that's actually an important characteristic, right? But that's also like, how would you ever measure that in the very beginning in the resume screen, you know? Like people are saying, okay, we should start doing video interviews. But then what does that do? That just over indexes us on personality instead of actual performance, right? And so uh, when everyone says like, you know, hiring is a is broken, you know, hiring is always broken. Everyone's like hiring sucks and uh, everyone sucks at recruiting and we need to disrupt this field. Um, maybe it's just because humans in the, in the end are the ones that are picking who's you know the one to actually come on and join a company to actually better promote it you know if we had a complete ai you know that knew everything uh then maybe they should just be the ones in charge and we should release and relinquish the keys right uh but who knows if we ever get to that point uh, in general i think the main theme that i want to get across is the fact that if you're applying to jobs uh, just understand that what you're trying to do is minimize the amount of risk. Uh, and that means that to minimize the amount of risk, uh, that means just being applying to a lot of jobs, uh, making connections because connections matter, and effectively trying to understand what the company actually wants so that you can be that for that company. Um, and at the same time, also keeping your own preferences in check too. Um, I think a lot of people in data science uh, don't have a lot of options, so they're willing to do a lot to get into any field. Uh, but at the same time, there's uh, a lot of people that do have options, and let's say that if you are an experienced candidate, then it helps to actually understand what your own 
uh, moral values are, uh, and then see if they align with the company to really be able to, you know, express essentially that you are, you know, a good fit for a company that actually uh, enjoys uh, your company. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. Um, cool. I uh, am going to finish this up. Please like and subscribe. <laughs>